Hey yo, what's up and welcome, I'm the one and only West Coast King and welcome back to the LAFC career where today we will be finishing up the regular season here in season number one. We have four games left to play as you can see in the month of October and all four of these teams, at least right this very moment, are still in the running for a playoff spot. Colorado's in seventh, they're in actually a really good spot even though they're one spot out of the playoffs right now. They have two games in hand over RSL who are in that sixth and final playoff position. So they're not all the way out of it. They're, they're looking pretty good. Houston's in third place in the West, having a very strong season. And then we have Vancouver in eighth and Sporting Kansas City in ninth. So all of these teams are still in it and are still competing and going for it right now. But before we get into the first match against Colorado, we do have to deal with the injury to Lee Wynn. He got hurt in the last game of last episode in the simulation. Unfortunate injury for him, broken toe. He's going to be out six weeks, so he's going to miss the entire final month of the season and probably the first round of the playoffs as well. But thankfully, we brought in Julian Green in the, in the summer transfer window. He's played very well when he's been put in the lineup, so I'm not too worried about that one. The question really is, who do we bring up to the bench to replace Lee Wynn? Because honestly, none of these players down here have had to play much at all this season. I mean, Harvey's the one that's played the most out of this group, but I don't need another left back on the bench. I think I'll go with Diamande. I think that's the best idea. He's got a little bit of game time early in the season. And if I need an extra attacking option, it's not a bad guy to bring in. So we'll put Diamande up there and we'll roll with that for, the, I think, probably the final month of the season. Unless, heaven forbid, if we pick up another injury, we could be in trouble. All right, here we go. Kickoff against Colorado. Last time we played them, I think that was last episode or maybe the episode before that. They did give us some problems. They took an early 1-0 lead, thanks to Shkels Angashi and Giles Barnes, before we came back at late, and I think we ended up beating them on a late game winner, but they're not a bad team at all, despite laying just out of the playoff picture right now. Boateng, ball in. You've got to be kidding me. That's literally the first time they've had the ball out of their own half in the first 15 minutes, and it's Giles Barnes who always gives me problems. Come on, boys. There we go. In the middle. K coming through with it. Mark Anthony K is going to line up a shot. Woo! Mark Anthony K just unleashed the laser beam from about 30 yards, maybe 25 yards, and just hit a screamer far post. We just have not been able to get through that defense. Saw the opening, and Mark Anthony K. Wow, what a strike from him. Tim Howard, no chance. Perfectly placed. Wow, there's an equalizer for you. It's all tied up at one. Mark Anthony K. Go for it, Mark Anthony K. He stays in front of Hairston. Gets that cross away. Just out of the reach of Rossi. We're still on it, though. For Julian Green. Has the shot. And it's wide. Oh, we are like... Our, our chances that we're creating have not been pretty. But they're they're almost effective. Just, just, just We're missing by a fraction here. We're just a little off. Oh, what the, oh, the, the chances in this game, I'm telling you, they've just been bizarre. That shot looked like he toe-poked it from about 35 yards and it hit the post. All right, this is almost certainly the last action of the game here. Free kick, cleared away by Diego Rossi and referee, yep, there's the final whistle. A 1-1 draw on the road against Colorado. That was not pretty. It was, both teams were horrific sloppy just bad bad football all around by both teams and to be fair neither team deserved to win that game so a point's probably fair all right so next up we have houston we're gonna be at home for this one like i said before houston is having a pretty decent season they're in third place in the western conference we have to rotate our team quite a bit this one's on short rest and for us as well we're in the running for the supporter shield three points here would really help us out. All right, here we go. Kickoff against Houston. And I don't remember what happened last time we played them, but I was looking at their starting 11. I can't really figure out why they're quite so good this season. Their attack looks pretty decent, but the defensively they look pretty vulnerable. So I, again, I'm not sure why they're so high up in the Western Conference right now. 
All right, we have a corner here. We have Christian Martinez, or Christian Ramirez. There he is, and there he is. I almost called him Christian Martinez. Christian Ramirez adds a new wrinkle for those corners. Usually, we only have Walker Zimmerman to add to, to aim for off of that, but Christian Ramirez can get up and win headers as well, and he puts in a beautiful header back post and over the top of Willis, and it is one nothing early for LAFC. Ooh, nice ball from K. Failhaber, he's got Diego Rossi again. That just seems to always be there. Here comes Rossi in there. Plays it across to K. K takes a touch. Blocked and then cleared while he's sitting down. Give me a break with that. How in the world did that just work? And now that ball, again, another sloppy pass from us. I can't believe that. Let's keep that pressure up. Uh, sort of. Ball in there for, Martin for Ramirez. I almost called him Martinez again. But that time it's a great save by the keeper as Christian Ramirez. I don't know why I'm having such a problem with that. But Christian Ramirez almost makes it 2 nothing. Is that it? Is he onside? Was Minota... No, he wasn't onside. Oh my good... What a finish by Minotas. That deserved a goal. Ellis, good ball in there. Oh, Manotas is definitely onside this time. Get back up. Whoa, that was blocked. I don't know who blocked the second attempt. I don't know if it came off Ty Miller. Who blocked the shot? It was Ty Miller. That was freaking heroic. I'm not sure he knew much about it, but that was a huge save. Interesting. Blessing. Oh, my goodness. Matinho, what a ball for Matinho there. Matinho cuts it inside. Gets that pass away. Beautiful layoff. Oh, the shot was so bad. And it's Andre Horta who's just into the game. All right, come on. We have another corner here. Late stages. Let's just aim for Christian Ramirez one more time. My God, does that work? I, I really, really want to use Diego Rossi up top. I do. But come on, man. Superman is in full form right now. He's got two goals. And he's the only reason we're winning this game. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, my God. Just... Stupid, stupid mistake. It's the only way I give up goals at this point. It's just by dumb, dumb passes. And I gave away the ball in a bad spot in my own half. Instant offense going the, uh, offense going the other way for Houston. And what a freaking finish. I don't even know who that blonde doofus is, but that was a fucking world-class finish. Ball for Ramirez. There's the final whistle. Wow, we just kept the ball after that goal. I was not taking any chances there. We needed those three points. Houston didn't deserve any points for it. And we do get the win in the end. And honestly, two games left in the season. We definitely have a first-choice striker dilemma on our hands. I I'm sorry, but Ramirez has been the better player in that position. I've tried three different players, and Ramirez is clearly the better one. All right, so here is the current standings with two games left to play. We are six points clear of Seattle in the Western Conference. So all we need from the last two games is one point, and we secure that top spot in the West. In the East, New York Red Bulls have already secured that top spot, but for the Supporter Shield race, they are one point ahead of us. Now, we have two games left. Like I said, it's against 8th place Vancouver and ninth place Sporting. Honestly... If the Supporter Shield was an actual trophy in the game, which it should be as the MLS is a fully licensed league in FIFA, uh, yeah, I would probably go for it. But because we don't get anything for winning the Supporter Shield because it's not an actual trophy in FIFA, I think I'm probably just going to simulate the last two games. Well, let's simulate the one against Vancouver and see what happens, and then we'll decide on if we want to simulate against uh, Sporting Kansas City. And for this one against Vancouver, I'm going to leave Rossi up top as striker. Just because in simulations, I think it's better to have your higher rated players in there. And Rossi's 75 rated, whereas Ramirez is only 70 rated. So we'll go with Rossi in this one. And hopefully we get the win. But again, all we need is one point to really secure the top spot in the West. And that's what really counts, at least for this career mode anyway. So let's see if we can get something. A 1-1 draw. Not our best performance, but there's our point. And for the last game of the season, it's decision day in MLS. Everyone plays at the exact same time, which is something FIFA, I think, actually got correct. I'm pretty sure that actually does happen here. But we're going to be away to Sporting Kansas City. We're still one point back of a supporter shield, even though, again, it doesn't actually happen in FIFA. It's not a thing in FIFA. But I am going to go with Ramirez in this one. Rossi has not scored in a very, very long time. So we're going to go with Ramirez up top and see if that changes our fortunes any... 
and it does because he scores twice again and i'm pretty sure that just decided our rotation for the playoffs we're going with ramirez all right so here are the final results from our first regular season here in this career in the eastern conference new york red bulls finish on top with 67 points they did just edge us out for that supporter shield we finished with 66 points unfortunately uh, Atlanta United finishes second with 60. DC United with 51. Decent season from them. Orlando City, something they've never done before. They made the playoffs in fourth place. NYCFC in fifth place. That's a little surprising. Usually they're much, much better than that. And then Toronto in sixth place there as well. Philadelphia, despite a really good second half of the year, just missed the playoffs. Montreal right there on 46 as well. And Columbus on 43. Then there's New England and Chicago. And we just won't talk about what they did this year. In the Western Conference, there we are with 66 points. Again, one point behind New York Red Bulls for that top spot, which also means if we face them in the MLS Cup Final, we will be playing away at Red Bull Arena, which could be a tricky fixture. Seattle finishes in second place, six points behind us. Colorado actually jumped all the way up to third in the final two weeks of the season. Not bad for them. Houston finishes even with them on points on 48 in fourth place. Dallas in fifth. Minnesota, despite... A strong start to the season. They were in first place for a very long time. They actually finished just in sixth, but they at least make the playoffs. Whitecaps finish on 46 as well, but just miss out. And RSL fell out of the playoff spots on the last day of the season. Very unlucky for them. Sporting Kansas City finished ninth. LA Galaxy, Portland, and San Jose down there in the bottom of the Western Conference. So in the one game playoff here, we had Orlando taking on NYCFC, but NYCFC takes that one. Despite being on the road for that, they come through and move on to the next round. Houston takes care of Dallas in a Texas Derby in the playoff round in the Western Conference. Back in the East, Toronto, again on the road, knocks out DC United, and then Colorado knocks out Minnesota. So the home teams in the West won, and the away teams in the East won. And that sets up the conference semifinal matchups as follows. We have NYCFC taking on Atlanta United. That is a pretty interesting matchup. Toronto FC taking on the top-seeded New York Red Bulls. I'm guessing Red Bulls are going to come out of that one, but we'll have to see. Houston takes on Seattle. Those are a couple of wild card teams. Houston played us pretty tough, and I know Seattle's a good team with Rui Diaz up top. He was one of the top scorers in the league this year. So either team that comes out of that should be a fairly decent matchup for us, assuming that for the third episode in a row, we can handle Colorado, and I don't foresee that being too much of a problem for us. And that is where we're going to end this one for today. So next time out... We get the playoffs started. We have Colorado again. And we'll see how the rest of the teams do. But this should be a pretty fun playoff run here with LAFC. And we are going to be going with Christian Ramirez up top. I think over the last month of the season, he definitely has earned the right to start up there for us in the playoffs. And, by the way, we're getting Lee Wynn back, I think, for the beginning of the Colorado series as well. So we're going to be at full strength minus Moutinho who picked up a red card on the last day of the season will be at full strength heading into that one so that's it for this one if you did enjoy it and you're looking forward to the playoff run here make sure to let me know by leaving a like below subscribe if you're new i'll see you when we come back for some more lafc career see you